In the early 1950s, the Palomar Observatory's wide-angle telescope captured thousands of stars across the night sky on glass photographic plates. Decades later, when researchers at Nordita in Stockholm began digitizing those same plates, they noticed something that shouldn't exist. Tiny flashes of light, single brilliant points that appeared in one exposure and vanished completely in the next. They weren't stars, they weren't comets, and they weren't camera defects. Over 106,000 of these transients appeared across the plates. Each one lasted less than 50 minutes, bright as a star, gone forever. The researchers began to notice patterns. The flashes clustered around certain dates, not random, but rhythmic. And when they compared the timing of these mysterious lights with declassified historical records, they found something that sent a chill through the scientific community. The flashes were 68% more likely to appear the day after a nuclear weapon test. And their frequency rose in perfect step with reports of unidentified anomalous phenomena, UAPs. Something in the sky was reacting to our nuclear detonations, but what? What if those lights weren't cosmic explosions but reflections from something already here, orbiting silently above us? In 1952, five years before humanity launched its first satellite, these flashes recorded sunlight bouncing off flat, mirror-like surfaces, the kind of reflections you'd expect from metallic panels in high orbit. But there was one problem. There weren't supposed to be any. Beatrice Villaroel, the astrophysicist leading the Vasco project, noticed a disturbing coincidence. The bursts of light spiked after each nuclear test, as if some unknown observer had turned to look. What could reflect light in space before Sputnik existed? Fragments of human technology? Natural debris? Or as the data suggested, something metallic, intentional, and not made by us? To find out, the team went back through history Every night between November 1949 and April 1957, over 2,718 days of sky exposures. They mapped each transient's timestamp against records from the U.S., Soviet, and British nuclear test archives, and against every verified UAP report logged in the UFOCAT database, the most comprehensive record of sightings from that era. Patterns emerged like constellations drawn in data. Whenever nuclear fire lit the Earth, the heavens flickered back. Transients were 45% more likely within one day of a nuclear test. The peak correlation one day after a test was unmistakable. The probability that this pattern occurred by chance? Less than 1%. And the link with UAPs was even stranger. For every additional UAP reported worldwide on a given date, the total number of transients in the sky increased by 8.5%. When both nuclear tests and UAP reports coincided, the effect was additive the number of unexplained lights more than doubled. The data didn't whisper. It shouted. Something up there was reacting to what we were doing down here. If these flashes were fallout particles glowing in the upper atmosphere, they should have appeared on the same day as the detonations not after. If they were contamination on the plates, they'd show foggy smears, not clean star-like dots. And if they were cosmic rays, their distribution would be random, not synchronized with nuclear detonations or UAP waves. Yet the data held. Only one day mattered, the day after. Almost as if something took 24 hours to respond, to observe, or to reflect back. Then another anomaly. By March 17, 1956, the flashes suddenly stopped. Even though 38 more above-ground tests followed in the next year, no further transients were recorded. At nearly the same time, global reports of UAPs near nuclear facilities plummeted. It was as if whatever had been watching had simply left. For Beatrice Villaroel and her team, this discovery wasn't born in a high-tech lab, but in dust, glass, and forgotten archives. They worked through century-old plates, each fragile as history itself, restoring them pixel by pixel. Most astronomers had dismissed the bright dots as scratches or dust specks. But V. Laroel looked closer, comparing hundreds of plates, frame by frame. The points moved like nothing natural, too sharp, too brief, 
to intentional. Each one became a whisper from a silent sky, captured decades before satellites, drones, or Starlink constellations. When she presented her findings, the connection between these ancient flashes, UAP sightings, and nuclear detonations, the reaction was electric. Suddenly, the world's headlines turned toward the 1950s again. Not for Cold War secrets, but for the possibility that the cosmos had answered our most violent act. So what were these lights, really? One hypothesis. An atmospheric phenomenon triggered by radiation, a kind of long-lived Cherenkov-like glow persisting for hours. But that theory breaks under scrutiny. The transients appeared as perfect points, not streaks, meaning the light source wasn't in the air, but in orbit. Another idea, nuclear debris ejected into the upper atmosphere, yet fallout dust would scatter light diffusely, not mirror it. That leaves a third, far stranger option. What if the flashes were solar reflections from flat metallic objects in high Earth orbit objects that had been there before we ever reached space? This was the same decade when the skies above Washington, D.C. erupted in radar and visual sightings of fast-moving luminous disks, the 1952 Washington Flap. On the exact night of those sightings, Palomar's plates captured multiple transients in the same window of time. Coincidence? Or connection? If those objects were real and reflective, they would glint only when aligned perfectly between the sun, the observer, and their mirror-like surface a cosmic Morse code flashing from orbit. But why did they stop after 1956? Because we began launching our own. Sputnik's ascent may have been the moment they no longer needed to watch. The Vasco project didn't stop at Palomar. It traced similar anomalies all the way back to the Harvard photographic plates of the late 1800s, where isolated, vanishing stars appeared and disappeared without explanation. Modern surveys. Pan stars, Gaia, and the Zwicky Transient Facility still record unexplained glints every year, most dismissed as software artifacts or debris. But when analyzed over time, a haunting pattern emerges. Every era of technological breakthrough, radio, radar, nuclear fission, artificial intelligence is accompanied by a spike in unexplained aerial or orbital phenomena. It's as if each human milestone sends a pulse into the cosmos and the cosmos blinks back. For decades, humanity has looked outward, believing the sky was passive a canvas for our observations. But these flashes suggest something else. What if the night sky is a mirror, not just of light, but of attention? When we detonated the first nuclear weapons, we didn't just split atoms. We announced ourselves to the universe violently, unmistakably. And the very next night, the stars blinked back. Maybe those transients were nothing more than the universe's way of recording our noise. Or maybe they were watchers, signaling across the void, marking the moment a young species learned to destroy itself. Whatever they were, they vanished before the space age began, as if they'd seen enough. Somewhere in the Palomar archives, thousands of silent glass plates still hold their faint traces tiny fingerprints of light left by something that noticed us first. The data is real, the patterns are measurable, the meaning still unknown. If nuclear fire could make the stars react, the meaning still unknown. This is The Secret. Subscribe and keep watching the sky.